connected, that are connected to the various virtual sites. Uh, we also greet you in that wonderful name of Jesus, and we are excited uh, and thankful to be back in person uh, for uh, Wednesday night Bible study. It is good to see you in the house. I missed you. And, uh, we're just glad that you are here. We're going to be dealing with casting down who was a king in the Old Testament created, built an image of himself nine feet tall, nine feet wide and of course you can see the beard uh, the hat and those things that are on the back uh, of his on his back are wings. It is this image that Meshach, Shadrach, and, and Abednego were urged, forced to bow to. And they refused to bow. And it's going to be interesting that when we start dealing with idols, 
idols are images most of the time connected to music. Mm -hmm. And so music promulgates certain worship of a false deity. The enemy always attached music with images. Um, and you've got a hint already what an idol can become. Uh, many of the rap artists, many of the genre of rhythm and blues, uh, and even gospel, have turned into I will worship Michael Jackson, an image, his dancing and his music, people fainted at the sight of Michael Jackson. And some of you are old enough, when he did the moonwalk, This gentleman's soul over three billion records when he did that moonwalk and people literally worshiped him as a god. Um, athletes. We have people calling Michael Jordan, Jordan the goat, <coughs> the greatest of all. Matter of fact, he even called himself God. Called himself the Jesus. Because of his ability to have supernatural feats. And people worship. And oftentimes, particularly in the 21st century, what capitalize or takes our attention is our phone, is our tablets. There are images that cause people to be addicted to pornography simply because you can get in a 5G world so much information before an event ends, you have a live caption of what's going on in the world. And uh, I dare any of you to cut your phone off I dare you to cut your tablet off for two days. And God help you if you can go without a phone or a tablet or a computer for a week. And we become so addicted to it. The average person hits their phone. It's incredible. 500 times a day. And you hit it and you don't even realize it. You hit it when it's time to be quiet, when you should be sleeping. You're hitting a tab. Um, just think how many times you touched your phone today. I, I did, I count. There's this little thing on my phone where it tells me how many times I went to my phone. And from this morning, early this morning, from about 4.30 this morning until about an hour ago, 625 times. I hit my phone, whether it was from scripture, whether it was to talk, whether it was to text. Um, 242 texts today. 
242 texts and I responded to 168 of those texts today. I have more texts or images that I can respond to. Um, and that's simply amazing. We wake up by it. We go to sleep by it. We listen to music with it. Um, we connect to the world by it. Um, it used to be a time when you didn't like somebody. You just would tell them, I hate your guts. But now it's through Instagram. You IG them. Um, or TikTok them. Um, or Facebook someone. And you can tell folk off. I was reading some Facebook, you know, since I didn't have anything to do today. I read a few Facebook um, statements and people have become mean. People will tell you off because they don't have to face the person. Come on, somebody. And all of us has talked about somebody on Facebook. We just didn't give them the name. We didn't like an entry. We thought they were talking about us. <laughs> and we sent an entry out. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and you couldn't wait. I hope they do respond. <laughs> Come on. I want them to respond. You send another one, and then you block them. <laughs> Once you get mad, and you curse them out, and you said all you can say, then you block the person. And then you make a comment before you block them so they get the message and they can't respond to you. Amen. Saints ghost each other. Folk are ghosting you. Did y'all know that? They don't like you or the horse you rode in on. And they won't say praise the Lord, good morning, good night, goodbye, good sandwich. But they watch what you put into the World Wide Web. And of course you know, once it hits www, it's there. It's in the cloud. Just touch somebody and say, you said it, you didn't mean it, but it's out there. <laughs> I was working with a young person and they had applied for a position and they were an astute person, uh, 3.8 in college, uh, outstanding involvement uh, in the community. And this particular person went to an interview and they were ready to be offered a position. And the person that was ready to offer the position asked, if I were to go on IG, Facebook, TikTok, what would you say about your personality and what would people say about you? And the person said they lied and said it's great. So the person that was hiring right in front of them went to their ID account. And they're looking at the IG and they're looking at them. This person said, they looked at their IG and looked at them again and said, there appears to be two different people here. What you have on paper looks good.
But what you have in the world wide web is that you're a drunkard. You're a profaner. You're breaking the law. Drinking tequila while they were driving and recorded it. Thinking that they could erase it. Hello, somebody. It becomes an image. And that image is very difficult to break. It is in the book of Exodus. I think that the book of Exodus is pretty critical because it is really the first time that God deals with idols or images. And the picture that you're looking at right now is another depiction of Aaron, the priest the high priest of Israel making a golden calf when Moses goes to Mount Sinai to get the Ten Commandments. Moses goes to Mount Sinai. Why is Mount Sinai so significant? Because Sinai, first of all, is one of the tallest mountains um, at that particular time, some 7,497 feet above sea level. So you could see Sinai um, clearly. And Sinai represents high mountains and revelation of God. So it is at Mount Sinai several times Moses climbs it to get a revelation from God. And while he is receiving the revelation of God for 40 days Israel backs it. 40 days. Now let's see what happened. God brings them out of Egypt, delivers them, takes them through 10 plagues. Thousands of people perished. Millions of people perished in the 10 plagues. God keeps them. He saves them. Death spirit comes through. God covers them. They go out, they go to the Red Sea, God delivers them. He gives them water, he gives them food. Their shoes don't even wear out. Can you believe that? Can you imagine having the same shoes for 40 years? None of this, some of you couldn't even imagine having it for six weeks, but I mean, you know, you have shoes for a year and you're just losing it. They had clothes and shoes that did not wear out. How could that be walking through the desert for 40 years? That's God's sustaining. He keeps what you got. You don't know. You, you're tired of that car. But you better thank God for it. <laughs> you got a you got a pray mobile. Pray that it gets started. Pray that it'll get you there and you, you're really speaking in tongues to get you back home. Ever been there? I've had a pray mobile. Pray, please, Lord, please, please, Jesus, Jesus. I'm driving, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Just to get to the store. Five miles away. 
and God keeps it, and all you can do is complain about it. And God allows you to keep that thing, to keep those clothes, to, um, to keep that automobile, to keep that house until you can do better. For 40 years, God made a way for Israel. All they could do was complain about what they couldn't get. We're tired of eating onions and leeches. You give us water. I'm tired of water coming out of the rock. We want some Kool-Aid. Give us something with a little sting in it. We're tired of drinking water. God gave them manna. You know what matter? People call it bread. No, matter wasn't bread. Matter was whatever they wanted it to be. If they wanted a sirloin and some fries and some broccoli, when they ate that manner, that's what they tasted. Woo! But somebody wanted a hamburger. Somebody just wanted a salad. Somebody wanted a filet mili. Come on, somebody. <laughs> You can't even pronounce it. Forty dollars a pound. Give me some filet mignon. Filet mignon. <laughs> you can't even pronounce it. God gave them whatever they need, and all they could do was what? Complain. I don't have this. I don't have that. We're tired of eating manna. Can you imagine eating manna for 40 years? But it's whatever you wanted. If you, if you needed Fruit Loop, then you ate Fruit Loop. <laughs> if you needed Sugar Smacks or Cheerios, God said, I'll give you whatever you desire. Just worship. And don't just worship me half-heartedly. Worship me with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your might. When you come into my presence, let it be a genuine praise. Look where he brought us from. Brought you all the way. And who are you to say what was good or bad for you? Bible says all things work together for the good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. So God gives you what you need. He sustains you. All he says is when you come in my presence, don't come complaining, don't come murmuring, don't come blaming, give me the praise. Because if you don't give me the praise, the devil will open the door. To praise and worship something else. See, we were created to worship. Sakach. Everybody say Sakach. Sakach means we're body, soul, and spirit. And our soul was created. S H A C A U H. Sakach. We were created to worship. He put that in every one of us. That's why you'll never be satisfied with a man. You'll never be satisfied with a woman. You'll never be satisfied with crack. You'll never be satisfied with a Budweiser. Because he created you. Tell anybody, tell 
Because you taste the Holy Ghost, you don't know what joy is. When you've ever been filled with the Holy Ghost, Bible says joy unspeakable. I can't even tell you how joyful I am. I'm out of money, my car is broke, my house is leaking, but I got joy. Joy is knowing that everything is going to be all right. I don't know when it's going to be all right, but I know God is going to work it out. Somebody ought to be here him. God deals with Israel. Exodus, he deals with Israel. 40 days, 40 years. Look at Exodus, 40 chapters. God deals with the number 40. And the number 40, woo, hey, thank you, Lord means generation. That's what 40 means. God said, if you praise me in, in, in Exodus 30, 31, 32, he said, if you don't get rid of your sin, if you don't repent, I'm going to visit your children's children's generation. Hallelujah. So if you don't get rid of the curse, it don't disappear. Y'all heard it? It don't die, it multiplies. So 40 years represents a generation of experience. I don't want my children to go through the hell I went through. I don't want them making the same mistakes because I refuse to repent. I refuse to put away my idol. See, most folk don't have their idols in the open. They have idols in the cave. Woo. I'm going to talk about the four types of idols. And one of the idols is it's a private addiction. 40% of the preachers that you hear on television and on Sunday morning are addicted to pornography, addicted to sex, addicted to drugs and alcohol. Telling you can be born again and then they go home and sip a martini. Hallelujah! I want somebody that has an anointing that can break the generational curse says that are in my life. I don't need somebody laying hands on me on Sunday morning and then laying hands on me on Sunday night. Hallelujah! I need somebody that can break this Break this enigma. I've been depressed and I need an anointing that will break this depression. I've got an anger. I've got an addiction. And I need something that will make it go away. Hallelujah. God said, if you worship me with all your heart. Hallelujah. Don't wait till Sunday morning. To put your praise in. Come on now. We mean we haven't been in here for a year for Bible study? You ought to get your dance on right now. You ought to get your praise on. God has kept you alive. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Lord. 
God says, if you don't worship me, the booger man is going to get you. Worship keeps the devil away. Praise keeps those addictions away. That's why the Bible says that everything that have breath, praise the Lord. Because when you praise the Lord, you're lifting him up. You're lifting him up above your addiction, above your sin, above your pride, above your condition. I may be in hell today, but I'm going to lift him up. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to lift him up. I'm not going to let my condition become my idol. Your condition can become your idol. And you begin to lean on your addiction, your weakness, your sin. Hallelujah. And then you start worshiping it. You give it too much of your attention. Anybody listening to what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. 40 chapters. Israel is in the desert for 40 years because they went a whoring after other gods. And then Moses goes to Sinai for 40 days. To get a word. Exodus can be divided. I'm going to read the scripture. Exodus can be divided uh, into six portals. Six portals. Exodus 1 through 3 deals with the history and the story of Moses' birth. That's the first book. The second book is chapter 4 to chapter 14 and it depicts Moses leaving Israel to freedom. So there it talks about their deliverer. Um, Moses is a deliverer. Moses, the word Mos Moses, it's actually in um, Hebrew, Moshe. Moshe or Moshe. That means through the bulrush. And if you all remember the story of Moses and his mother uh, gave uh, him up, put him in a basket and put him in the Red Sea um, and floats him through the bulrush, which are weeds or grass that's grown in um, um, the sea, or the Nile, excuse me, I said the Red Sea, but the Nile. And so he goes through the bulrush, the difficult part. Some of you wish you could have it like someone else. You don't know what hell I've been through to drive a BMW. You don't know. You wish, I wish I could have that. Do you want to drink from the cup? I drink from Someone said, I wish I could be a bishop. I said, look, I'm going to give you two painkillers and go to sleep and wake up from that nightmare. Because the higher you go in God, the greater you become an attack for the enemy. Y'all think y'all got some player haters? <laughs> I have player haters I don't even know. Hallelujah. Someone came by the church today and went like this. I said, what did you do? He said, I just cursed you. I looked at him, I went. Curse you, sin on me. I send it back to the pit of hell. The day you curse me is the day you curse yourself. Because the Bible says, touch not my anointing. Come on, somebody. And they backed up. I said, get in your car. 
don't let Bishop go that to you, you know, when you come to that. <laughs> that happened this morning. Someone got out of the car and went, I said, what did you do? He said, I just cursed you. I just looked at him because the Negro was coming out. Hallelujah. The militant Maurice. I just went. I serve a God that's a curse breaker. No weapon formed against me. I don't care what type of Cuba dust you put on me. I don't care what you say. I don't answer to what you say. I answer to what my God says. I am who he says I am. And you are who God says. Hallelujah! Look at somebody right there and just go. Not to them, but just go and tell them I break the curse. I break the curse of my family. I break the curse on my job. I break the curse of that substance. I break the curse that's in my mind. I break that curse of sickness. I break that curse of mental disease. I break that curse of sadness. I break that curse of poverty. I break that curse of being alone. I break it. Somebody better give God praise. Chapters 32 through 34, they have this golden calf, as you see on the screen. Amen. They create this golden calf while Moshe is on Mount Sinai. My, I got to tell somebody right now. Aaron was the assistant pastor. He was supposed to be in charge while Joshua and Moses went up to Mount Sinai. While Moses and Joshua, Joshua was Moses' minister. Come on. Moses had a minister, and it was Joshua. And as he's getting Moses the Ten Commandments, Joshua said, I hear the sound of war. He said, I hear the sound of singing. I hear the sound of music. Let's go down. My God. Can you imagine what type of music they must have been playing so to the point that they could hear it 7,000 feet in the air. Remember, three million people were delivered out of Egypt. Three million folk, y'all. Can you imagine what the sound of three, three million folk when they backslide? They were taking the gold out of their teeth. Took the gold out of their earrings. Took the gold off of their fingers. Come on now. They even brought some gold with them out of Egypt. And said, let's make a calf. Now it was on purpose that they made a calf. Because that calf is the God of Ed. E-L, Ed. It's a Canaanite God. And God had warned them, stay away from these Canaanites. They are false worshipers. 
But see, sometimes when you've been enslaved, you end up picking up the spirits of other folk. Oh, watch, watch who bed you sleep on. Watch who bed you get out of. Watch who car you ride in. Y'all need to hear me? Watch who you dance with. Watch who you kiss. Woo! Watch who you hold hands with. Watch, oh God, my God, plickety plack and all of that. Because you wake up with fleas. Fifteen minutes of ecstasy gives you fifteen years of depression. And I want to break that curse tonight. Some of you made mistakes and you didn't know any better. Got into the wrong car, the wrong bed, did the wrong thing, said the wrong thing, did the, drank the wrong thing. Hallelujah. Now it's become a soul tie. But there's a new sheriff in town. I'm saying... You may have done it, and you would have been guilty of it. But God can break every shadow. He can break every feather. He can break every shadow. But you gotta praise him. You gotta give him all the praise, children. You gotta worship him. With fervency. I don't have to wait for the music. I don't have to wait for the drama of the good times. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done, I can shout by myself. I can dance down the My soul say yes. Yes. Yes, Lord, yes. My soul say yes. Woo! That's what God wants. He said, give me your best praise. Give me your best worship. And I'll give you a miracle that you won't be able to believe. Hallelujah. How desperate are you for your miracle? How desperate are you for your breakthrough? God didn't say, give me lots of money. He didn't say, give me clothes. He didn't say, buy me a car. He said, come into my sanctuary with praise. Into my courts with praise. Come into the doors with thanksgiving. Come on, let's take a few moments and just tell the Lord, thank you, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Thank the Lord. Lord, yes. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Come on, open your mouth and say, I'm free right now. I don't have to wait till the end of Bible study. I don't have to wait till Sunday. I'm free right now. I can have whatever I say. I can have it. I can have my joy back. I can have my freedom back. I can have my mind back. unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they said to me, and they shall say to me, excuse me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And that word there, I am that I am, it's in the Hebrew. It's Ei, Asha, Ei, Ash. That's what it is. Ei, Asha, Ei, Ash. Which means I am who I am. I will become what I choose to become. I am what I am that. Woo. Somebody ought to say that right now. I am that I am that. What do you mean? Whatever you can imagine, God is even more than that. He's chocolate chip and, 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 and cow milk, and he's better than that. He's better than a Mountain Dew and a Snickers. Hallelujah. He's more than you can even imagine. Woo! That's why we got to ask him for the impossible. He said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, I don't want to just ask God for the low hanging fruit. I want to ask God for the impossible. When the door is closed and the chains are on the door and they said it's too late, I want the impossible. And God said, I am that I am that. I'm all of that splickety splat. I'm more than what you can imagine. I'm more than what you can say. I'm more than what you can do. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither has it entered the heart of man what God has prepared. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. He 
said, tell him, I will be what I will be. I create what I create. In order, what he's saying is, I'm the existing one. There's no beginning and there's no end to me. I created everything. I even created evil for my glory. <laughs> you know that devil you're fighting with? He gonna have to give God the glory. And if you keep your mouth shut, come on, he'll give God glory before we stand before the great white throne. Some of your devils are ready to give up right now. But your mouth too big. Your pride is too big. I ain't letting nobody take advantage of me. That devil is a liar. The Lord told Israel, it's Exodus 19. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. For this God, this Pharaoh that you have seen, you shall see them no more. I'm telling somebody tonight, by the time you get in your car, by the time you reach your car, I would have already buried your demons. I'm going to bury your devil tonight. That thing that's messing with you, been messing with your spirit, with your body, with your mind, you're going to bury that devil tonight. You're not going to see this evil in the world. That one was for me. Hallelujah. God just told me there's a devil that you've been fighting with for me. You're not going to see him anymore. This is the last night. This is the last night. Get ready for a dance. Get ready for victory. Get ready for a dance. Because this devil we're going to bury tonight. You come to the right place at the right time doing the right thing. I am the existent one. Come on, turn with me. I'm almost finished. We got five minutes. And we're only on screen number three. <laughs> I don't want to overdo it. Turn with me to Exodus. Chapter number 20. Chapter number 20. And those of you who understand that chapter number 20 is quite significant because it is here that God begins to speak the words of um, his commandment. His commandments. Now please know this, and maybe you didn't know this, but there are two sets of commandments. Alright? There wasn't just one commandment. There's one commandment that was written in chapter number 32, and then there's another set of commandments in chapter number 34. Two sets of commandments. Because Moses did something. Here is the verbal peace that God gives to Israel. He said, now, I delivered you. I brought you out. Now, here are the laws to stay out. When God brings you out, it's your responsibility to stay out. When he delivers you, you got to stay delivered, baby. Come on. If he breaks the yoke, you got to stay free. Amen. And he'll keep you in perfect peace. But we want God to do everything. We want him to come by the house and just, Lord, just tell him, just let him float away. You know you can't stand smelling his cologne? Come on. 
You didn't lose when he knocked on your door. You lost when you answered the telephone. Because you already knew. Come on. Why you gonna mess with a man who said, don't mess with me because I'm trouble? I'm waiting for God to tell me. He already told you. Don't mess with me because I'm trouble. When the Lord didn't say it, <laughs> you stupid bird. You. <laughs> the man told you, leave me alone. I'm no good. You're no good. You're no good. You're no good. <laughs> Baby, you're no good. I say it again. You're no good. You're no good. And you waiting for God. God, tell me. God said, I wish I could slap you upside the head. <laughs> he had already told you I'm no good. Come on, somebody. You can't mess with fire. You got to hear me? Some folk you don't let in your car, you don't let in your house, you don't give no more milk. You got to hear what I said. Don't even give them a dime. Don't give them no pair of shoes. Don't give them your wig. Come on, somebody. Don't give them your eyelashes. Don't even give them fingernail polish. Because there's a soul connect with them. They ask for fingernail polish today. They want your body tomorrow. Worship. Worship. All right, we got it. Exodus chapter number 20. Can you give me just a few moments so I can read this and maybe we'll go through this uh, slide here. You have it? Exodus chapter number 20. Amen. And God spake, verse number 1, and God spake all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. Yeah. Yeah, those angels. Come on, somebody. Y'all got angels. Pictures of angels. Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Blonde hair. The devil is alive. Got <laughs> angels. A picture of Jesus. I never seen an Arabic man with blonde hair and blue eyes. But you got one on the wall. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It is Jesus. On my wall. <laughs> <laughs> <In that bird. laughs> you have developed an image. Oh, I'm going to mess with you. I'm going to tell you that a cross is an image for idolatry. I'm going to tell you where the cross came from. Came from the Catholic Church. Woo! Oh my. <laughs> the mother of Jesus, Queen of Heaven. That devil is alive. The Queen of Heaven. She need the Holy Ghost too. She was in the upper room. She had to have the Holy Ghost like everybody else. Yes. She ain't no queen. Amen. We set folk up. Y'all not hearing me. Oh, yeah. And y'all wonder. Somebody said, and the pictures in the worship said it looks so dull. Because this is a temple for the worship of God. Amen. And he said, don't have any graven images. Y'all didn't hear me. What my picture doing up in the temple? <laughs> on the wall. <laughs> Looking down on you all. False worship. This is the house. This is 
the place of God. It should be co consecrated. Come on, somebody. We don't play up in this place. This is where God meets us. God didn't hear me. You didn't come to worship me, and I didn't come to worship you. The moment you worship me, I'm going to rebuke you. Because all the praise belongs to God. But places of worship have been set up. Come on, somebody. As images to worship. Y'all not hear me? Amen. Or you are hearing me. <laughs> Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Going into church and bowing to the cross. The Jesus that I serve is not on a cross anymore. Amen. And when you wear a cross with Jesus on it, you are worshiping a defeated Jesus. He is no longer on the cross. He said in Revelation chapter number one, I was dead, but now I'm alive forevermore and have the keys of death and hell. That's false worship, y'all. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a... Why is he a jealous God? Why does God say it's not good for me to be jealous? But he says he's jealous. He told me not to be jealous. I'm not supposed to be jealous of Mother Carl. I'm not supposed to be jealous of you. It's a sin for me to be jealous. But here God is saying, I'm a jealous God. Jealousy is only for those who have created it. God created you for you. God didn't create mother for me. God created mother for him. So I can't be jealous because I didn't create her. Y'all didn't hear me. You're not my members. This is not my church. How dare I say you're my members? The devil is a liar. You are the sheep of his pasture. Did you hear what I said? I don't have any members but my toes and my fingers. <laughs> Nothing in here belongs to me. All of it belongs to God. The moment I try to take the glory, it becomes idol worship. The moment I say I did it, I made it. I'm responsible. You set yourself up as an idol. I'm talking to somebody, right? He said, don't you bow down to nobody. Not even the potentate. Not the bishop, not the apostle, not the chief. He said, I'm the chief apostle. <laughs> Jesus said, I'm the chief. I may be the chief sinner, but he's the chief apostle. And nobody takes God's glory. Nobody takes God's glory. Not even your pastor. Don't make it so that you iodize me. Come on, somebody. You idolize me. Try an altar. That's what it means. That's how, it, how you spell it. Try a idol. I adultery. Try a idol. Anything that you set up. Visiting. Here, here's what he says here. For I am the Lord thy God. I am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers. But the children. Uh, 
unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God in it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger, that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that uh, in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the, seventh, the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother. Did you hear that? Amen. I don't care how bad they were. Amen. Come on. Amen. Honor your parents, even in their death. Amen. Why? When you dishonor your parents, here's what you do. You take days off it. You think about those who've lived to be 95, 100, 200, not 200, but, you know, long years. They honored their parents. And they don't have to be perfect for you to honor them. I wish one of my children would raise their voice at me. Come on, I'm getting so old I can't chase them. But I'll throw a rock at them. <laughs> Come on, I will. I can't catch you. Cause I got, I got to catch you. I got to catch you. Y'all didn't hear what I said? I got to catch you. Peace be still. Peace of steel. Come on, somebody. When you dishonor your parents, what you did to them is coming to you. And you just angry with your children. You want to slap the snot out of them. And you did the same thing to your parents. I can't hear it. Talked about them like a dog. And now you want to kill your children. But you didn't honor your parents. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Ah, kill them, David. Your mama and daddy didn't kill you. Hallelujah. I almost said something there, but I won't. But you honor your parents because long life, not just long life, but the quality of life. I want to be 85 years old and still in my right mind. I have the same energy that I had at 25, but at 85, my mind is still clear, still creative, still intuitive. But when you curse your parents, come on, because when you lay them in the casket, it's too late. You give them flowers and, and you cry, come on. And you the one that created most hell for them. You just cry. Just cry, cry, daddy, daddy, mom, mom. But when they were alive, you wouldn't honor them. You got to thank God that they did the best that they could do with what they had. Amen. No, it wasn't all that you needed, but you ought to thank God that you got some popcorn every now and then. Got some Cheetos. Come on, somebody. You got some milk. It may have been sour, but you got some milk. You ought to thank God. Because if you don't, your children going to get you. Somebody ought to say, you better say you're mad at that. They're going to get you. You make your parents lose sleep. That's why you looking like. You 
you looking like a ghost? What did you do to your parents? How did you treat them? How did you talk about them? <laughs> you want to slap the lips off of your children? Somebody should slap the lips off of you. Then you wouldn't be cursing your parents. Oh. Honor thy father and the mother that thy days may be what? Long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. If you spread hearsay, that's a lie. Amen. If you spread stuff that you don't know that's a fact, you are spreading a lie. And now you want to hurt somebody because somebody said that somebody said that somebody said about you and it wasn't true. But you did the same thing to somebody else. I heard through the great mind. And they minded their business. And everybody, when they see them come in church, is like, because of gossip. We're here for the gospel, not for gossip. What happens is this. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's what? Y'all didn't hear what I said. Thy neighbor's wife. That go for sisters too. <laughs> Come on. Everything that look like jello ain't jello. Some of it is cellulite. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. You got something good, but you want to nibble. That spirit is in the house. Men are nibbling on men. Well, it looks like me kissing a brother, a rusty man. That devil is me. I wish one brother would kiss me. <laughs> with a holy kiss. I'm going to give him an unholy fist. <laughs> I'm serious. Come on, give me a kiss. That devil is alive. If you can't shake my hand, come on. Come on. I, come on. Uh, Y'all talking? Am I talking? Man up on your boys. Stop hugging and kissing. Uh, then he no count to his wife because you don't spoil him. He only any count to you, and he won't work. But for two weeks, enough to get a paycheck. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? Amen. It can become idol worship. Amen. You can worship your children, y'all. I made Josh and Vicky. I can make some more. Come on, somebody. Don't put your children above God. Amen. Don't think your children, they would never do that. Your children just like my children. Amen. They get the devil on them just like your children. My children would never say that. You need to come to school one day in your robe with one butt <laughs> and sneak up on me. Come on, somebody. I stuck up on my son one time. And I came in and he was just acting a fool. And I just looked at him and I said, Come on. <laughs> The I didn't wait till we got home. I went to the restroom. Come on in the room. Jesus gonna be your dad. 
doctor <laughs> and whipped him into school. And he walking down the hall. <laughs> Stop acting like you got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Because my children do dirt just like your children. No different. Are there questions before we go? Are there questions or are there some comments? I hope this is interesting. I, I'm, we're going to get to this. You got the handout. We've got slides upon slides. I'm going to give you information. This is just an introduction. What God requires of us. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Uh, if there are questions, we're going to go off the air right now. If there are questions that you want.